sailing's greatest prize is up for grabs. Up here, taking a moment. Hey! And three, two, one. Yep, go, go. To compete for the America's Cup, you must first win the Prada Cup. It's winner takes all. Auckland, New Zealand is the battleground. Heroes will be made. History will be written. The trophy belongs to New Zealand. Three teams representing three nations of the same aim. Be the first to etch their name in that brand new silver. Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. The powerhouse Italians return with their sixth attempt at victory. So now it's time to really push. The New York Yacht Club, they held the cup for 132 years straight. After a 20-year absence, they're back with American magic. I think as a team, we're happy that Patriots in the hunt. Returning to the club that started it all in 1851. Ineos Team UK represent Great Britain's Royal Yacht Squadron. Their mantra, bring the cup back home and complete a 170-year-old mission. Don't go into the America's Cup unless you think you can, you can win it or you're there to try and win it. Lying in wait, the defender, Emirates Team New Zealand, the only team guaranteed a place in the final. Ahead, five weeks of one-on-one -on -one racing. One team will prevail. One team will win the Prada Cup trophy. Tēnā koutou katoa. Hello everyone, welcome to Tamaki Makaurau, Aotearoa, Auckland, New Zealand, home of the 36th America's Cup. And another glorious summer's day has graced the city at the sparkling waters of the Waitamata Harbour. Today is the opening day of the Challenger Series, the Prada Cup, the gateway to sailing's biggest show, the America's Cup match against Emirates Team New Zealand. For the three challenges, competition just ramped up a notch. The Prada Cup format starts with four round robins totaling 12 races. The challenger with the highest number of points at the end of the round robins earns direct entry to the Prada Cup final. Each win is worth one point. The remaining two teams will battle in the semi-final for that last final spot. The semi-final is a first to four wins affair, while the Prada Cup winner must snag seven to advance to the 36th America's Cup match against defender Emirates Team New Zealand. Now, those four round robins will be raced over the next two weekends. That's Friday through Sunday, and it consists of two races each day. On this opening day of racing, the New York Yacht Club and Patriot are first out of the blocks facing Ineos Team UK, who then have to reset and half an hour after race one, meet the challenger of record in Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli. And as we close in on race one, it's time to meet the team. Nathan Outeridge, former Artemis Hellman, Kenny Reid, the last man to lead a New York Yacht Club entry in the Cup in 2003. Dean Barker on helm of American Magic. And you guys have both been in the situation ahead of the Prada Cup. What's the feeling like now for this team? Well, this is emotion. This is pure emotion. I remember a dock not too far down from where this dock is being shown doing this in 2000 and 2003. Nathan, that first time you leave the dock, I remember my six-year-old daughter giving me a hug and getting all choked up after all the effort and all the time. It's just, it's really emotional. Yeah, it's really emotional. Look at, you know, you've got your friends and family that have been here supporting the team in all their training and preparation. And it's just amazing when you're rolling out of the shed, you're docking out to have them waving the flags and wishing you well. All right, lads, it's been about a month since we've had some decent racing. What have we learned, Kenny, over the last month and what can we expect today? Well, Stephen, we have a wild card entry in the Product Cup and it's called the weather, if you think about it. If you're Italians, you're hoping for a light air weekend. The Americans are looking for a bit more breeze than that. And if you're Ineos, while you're looking for as much wind as you can get. For these round robin series, we have tight three-day weather windows. Auckland's notoriously changing conditions may be somewhat nullified. So Nathan, let's roll the dice and see which group gets the wind cards in their favor. Yeah, well, Kenny, you're absolutely right. The weather is going to be a big player on who is going to be the favorite for these races. The, f the fact that these three boats are designed for different targeted wind ranges is just fascinating. The weather in Auckland can be unpredictable, and so that means there's no clear favourite. 
today we have a building southwest breeze so the timing of the building breeze is going to be critical so quite simply today lads there is one word and one condition that we've got to keep an eye and ear out for and that quite simply will be the wind So first up, a team with the pressure of history on their shoulders. Well, for American Magic, it's been a long haul to get to this moment. Technically, they're a new team, but well-funded and no excuses. And based on the last few weeks of practice racing, they're also a team full of confidence. The afterguard of Dean Barker and Terry Hutchinson will always have a microscope on them. But they've put together a talented supporting cast full of young rookies and seasoned veterans. So far, so good. Like all the other sailors in this regatta, they're just happy to finally be getting this show on the road. Well, Terry, the 15th of January, it's finally here. I mean, it's been a date fully etched in the calendar for the last three years. How ready do you and the team feel? I think we feel very ready. You know, we, we've spent a lot of time uh, from the mule through Defiant to Patriot on the water, learning and uh, developing. And, and from here, it's time to put all that work to uh, good use. Facing Patriot will be Britannia. Ineos Team UK is a new team led and backed by Ineos founder and chairman Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Sir Ben Ainsley, a previous America's Cup winner and the most successful Olympic sailor of all time, is team principal and skipper. And he's back again for another attempt to win this elusive trophy. There is no secret that this team underperformed in the America's Cup World Series racing in December, having not scored a race win to date. But that was last year, and the real race for the America's Cup begins today. Giles, just to start, can you tell us, you know, how many races you have today, and how does that affect how the team approaches it? Yeah, well, we've got two races today. We've got the Americans and then, uh, and then Luna Rossa. So it's, uh, well, we're, we're up for it. Um, we've had a, had a tough time of it, and we've made some big improvements, and we hope that'll show today. Well, the first day of the Prada Cup is being raced on course C, the stadium course, right outside Auckland Harbour. The boat's entering the starting area at 2 minutes and 10 seconds before the start, and then literally fly around an upwind, downwind, 1.8-mile racetrack with super narrow course boundaries. This certainly keeps the tactics and maneuvers fast and furious. And in this first race, the boats will go three laps around with a downwind finish and a 12-knot southerly breeze. And as we come over Rangitoto, the youngest of the volcanoes in this Auckland region, we see the course and most importantly, we see the spectator craft as well. And out amongst all of that is Shirley Robinson, our onboard chase boat one, Shirley. Crowd out there and boy, today is all about winning. Stephen, it is a, a very different day out here. You can feel the tension. I mean, not just within the teams, but also the fans lining the course. Course C, the stadium racetrack. They're here to support their team. And for the New Zealanders amongst them out watching to check out what the challengers have brought to, brought to this whole thing when it really matters. I mean, Stephen, we've all done a lot of talking over the past few weeks, haven't we? And much as I love chatting with you guys, it's finally time, isn't it, for the talking to stop. And what a way to kick off on so many levels. American Magic against Ineos Team UK. Terry Hutchinson's Patriot against Ben Ainsley's Britannia. This is a grudge match 170 years in the making. So buckle up, folks, because the Prada Stup is about to get real. Prada Cup round robin race one. And there you have it, American Magic against Ineos Team UK. Doesn't get too much better. The history link between those two countries where it all began 170 years ago. Light wins at the moment, Ken and Nathan. But the most encouraging thing, we could talking about light air. And we look to the right of the screen, Ineos Team UK, and they're falling OK in light air. This has been their struggle. This has been their Achilles heel through all the practice racing and the 
in the World Series event is getting up on their foils in the light air and staying on those foils in the light air. Uh, it looks like to be about 10, 11 knots of breeze out there, Nathan, and that should be enough to get them going, plus the improvements that they've made so far. Yeah, definitely enough breeze for foiling, looking at it right now. And both boats have made quite a few changes since we last saw them in, in racing. And, you know, you'd have to think Ineos Team UK with this breeze up over 10 knots is going to be a much competitive team. Yeah, Shirley, you've been watching the teams warm up and get ready for this opening race of the Prada Cup. And let's talk quickly about Ineos Team K. Do you have a good feeling of, of what you're seeing at the moment as they dial in? Well, Stephen, it's a it's a tricky course. Uh, up at the top of the course, there's plenty of breeze for foiling. We've seen 15, 16 knots, and the British team will be loving that. But down on the bottom, it can be quite patchy. And I think, you know, they need to be so careful not to fall off the foils, particularly in that pre-start. The one thing we did see, and we were fortunate, Coming lads, away, to yeah. see the practice races uh, uh, earlier on, and the confidence of the British now. team is high. That will count for a lot going into race one. It's high, but I, I, I think it's fragile, right? It, it, you can talk the talk, but now you got to walk the walk. They're saying we're, we're better, we're better, we're better, we're better. Nathan, they haven't won a race yet in any of the racing that we've seen, practice racing or otherwise, and they've made tons of changes to their boat. Uh, putting that all together is not easy. I mean, goodness, it, it, this is... I think it's fragile. I, I think they need to win a race here today. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, they're getting closer, and you can hear confidence in their voices in the practice racing that we've witnessed earlier this week. But we also hear the frustration when they're not converting this improved boat speed. You know, the sailors are now being given a tool that's actually going to be competitive, and it's up to them to really race it well. New rudders, elevators, masts, mainsail, headsails, uh, aero mods to the hull. They've done everything that they can to try and get themselves going. As we uh, take a look at BNAs here, run around to the starboard wheel and get ready for they will take the starboard entry today. Tens, two minutes and ten seconds will be port entry for American Magic. As the countdown clock comes on, they'll go pretty close to that two minutes and ten seconds as they yeah, a little bit behind, but they are into the starting area. This is really exciting <laughs> we've been we've been just sitting there chatting away speculating for so long now it happens now it's for real put it down my wheel my wheel clear in two one anywhere you like fine square Nathan, this starting procedure has really become more complex. The box itself that they have to st stay within the boundaries is small. They have to do multiple maneuvers, and the upwind starts have clearly brought actual match racing back into play. Yeah, definitely, you know, the, the starting box isn't big enough. The area that they can play in inside the boundaries is not big yeah. enough in the stronger breezes to do a full lap. You can see American Magic here getting quite close to that right-hand boundary and they're trying to stay inside yeah. the boundaries. They're trying to make sure that they can set themselves up for a good start today. But the boundaries you saw there earlier, potentially not effectively accurate there. You can see the spectator fleet is further out, but right now, Ineos is going to tack inside here. No, they're going past, so they're going to go into a pushing position. We'll just listen to the chat as they approach for the final time. On the breeze, yeah. Okay, okay going yeah. board. On the breeze. Yeah. Trim on, boys. Trim on. Main on. My pitch. Trim on. Yeah. yeah. Nice Trim on. My oh. Your wheel. I want to get high here. So Ainsley obviously Pressure. thought that American Magic was early. He chose to go behind, and now they're going to push towards the line as hard as possible. Less than 30 seconds to start of the Prada Cup in 2021 on the Hauraki Golf in Auckland, New Zealand, home to the 36th America's Cup. Happy down the line here, Ben? Yeah, happy. Okay, coming down here, Ben. Ten seconds to start. Start in five, four, three, two, one. And it's on. Prada Cup, round one, run, race one. American Magic against Ineos Team UK, and they are both away clean. The most important drag race of Ineos's young career here so far. Are they competitive in this win strength? We're going to find out pretty quick. 
they're going to approach this boundary very quickly. And as they approach the boundary, American Magic being the lure boat are going to have right of way to tap on the port tap. So expect both boats here soon to be tacking onto port. And it looks like the intersection is going to be inside the zone, which gives a right of way to American Magic. Shirley Robinson on the water. Good start by both teams. Great start. It was so even, Stephen. But American Magic seemed to have a slight edge. They're just, just really pushing and pushing in us, and, and eventually they had to tag. One telltale sign here is Ineos is actually, they've struggled to get up and go in in the light air, and they've been sailing with bigger jibs all the time because of that. Today, they actually, for the first time we've seen, they have a smaller jib up than their competitor. I find that really, I find that a good sign for them. Copy that. Pretty right hand shift, you don't want to take it. That's nice, our numbers. It looks like Ineos is going quite quick, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, they clearly made an effort in the pre-start to not engage, to keep that wide right position to windward, and maybe they're wanting to protect the right inside of the course, but right now they are going fast and high. Well, this might become as a surprise maybe to some people watching around the world, but I wonder what the chat is like on American Magic right now. You're going to pick up good left hand pressure here. He's showing better time, you know, like he's just hanging there. Should be well across. One leg. It's open course now, so there's no boundary protection for us if we go now. They, they roll at the same time. His fight on. Yeah, so we, we've got room to dip him, right? Yeah, no dip. No dip, not me. Looks like they're going to get the ley line here, so so a dip oh, is not a really an option for American Magic. Tack and tack is going to be my guess, or follow them in. Surprised they didn't go further, all the way to ley line there, Nathan. I think they must have got to that boundary a bit earlier than they wanted to. If American Magic can get to the boundary and make the top in one, they're going to save attack and they're going to have split tacks at the top and starboard advantage. Look at the white caps, it's quite windy at the top of the course here. So, is that wind, do you think, Shirley, or is that current affected? Is the current against the breeze up there causing that little chop? No, Kenny, the, the tide is outgoing for all of today, so it's wind. It's so much windier at the top end of this racetrack. Ineos got into it first with a lovely right hand shift. And we saw them really gain in that. And how about this, Enios Team UK fans? Enios Team UK on the first of six legs will round the top gate first, followed closely behind by American Magic. If anyone thought Enios was going to have trouble, think again. It truly is game on in the Prada Cup. I think they like that right-hand side of the race course the whole time. They, the way they set up on the starting line meant they wanted the right always. And you know what? Around that hill area out there, as you approach the harbor entrance, uh, it always seems to be an advantage in the upper right-hand side of the race course. Pressure, even. It's okay, settling it down here, boys. Yeah, Nice. Okay, speed's coming, 40s. Yeah. Okay, nice there. Still a... okay. Copy. Pressure looks good here, Giles. Left shift. Yeah. Try and get it ripping a bit here, Giles. Yeah. Um, Easing a touch here. Okay, have to work it up here. Little up, speed. Nice. This, is a, this has been a position of strength for young America, for American Magic through this whole game so far, is downwind speed. But again, I think this side of the race course that the Brits are on right now is, is that right-hand side or the bottom of our screen, as, as we're looking at it now, uh, seems to be an advantage. Big advantage. It should come as no surprise to those that are uh, seeing this maybe for the first time because we have had the thrill of just seeing uh, the Christmas races and the World Series and the practice races. When this boat we are seeing right now, Rita, 
or Britannia, uh, when that gets going, that is one of the quickest boats in this America's Cup. But they've found a way to, frankly, they've found a way to lose every race so far. They've been in every single practice race. So we're not, we're not, uh, we're not giving them any grief where grief isn't due. They, they've struggled so far. This is a really, really big moment for this whole program and all the effort that's gone into getting this boat competitive. They are cranking it close to 40 knots in the Team UK, and look at the advantage they have on American Magic. But also, if you look at this overhead shot, it looks graphically it's so much windier down that right-hand boundary, you know, that north head. If you are looking upwind on the right-hand side of the course where American Magic are jibing here right now, it looks windier on this side, and the other side looks lighter, and I think... Not only is uh, Ineos started well, held their lanes, but they actually use the breeze better, and particularly on this downwind run, they've had better pressure this whole run, and they're extending. I have to get this out of the way early in the piece here, looking and seeing the wind. Is it the shadows seeing pressure on the water? Is that telling us that you're seeing wind? Dark water. Darker, Dark water. Darker water, yeah. more wind. Dark patches and... And yeah, we don't just make that up. You would think we did. <laughs> we just no, no, I know you're not making it up. One board, ten seconds. Copy. Team UK about to complete leg number two of six. And this is the bottom gate. They'll drive around that and head up for leg number three against American Magic. And right now, as we head to the halfway point of this no opening race for the Prada Cup, yeah, they yeah, look strong. Yeah. Keep your eye on the bottom right of your screen. Those. Look at the difference and the Copy. lead that they have on American Pressure Magic. Is. Right now, it'll stop very Pressure. soon. Copy. And it stops out at 19 Pressure. seconds. Yeah. So keep your eye on that number. And a terrible bottom mark rounding by American Magic. Looked like a big touchdown on leeway skid. We heard Ben Ainsley talk about their bottom mark rounding of a leeway skid. But American Magic is worse. And a couple of unforced errors. Here. That's probably the first boat handling unforced error. But tactically, they're not sailing fantastically at the moment either. One word comes to mind when you see a little moment like that in a big race like this. Pressure. Pressure's better, higher, guys. Coming on. Coming up. Looking up. Good breeze here. Coming on. Good pressure. Nice. Looking up there, Ben. Yeah, coming up. So, Ken, as we're going up the racetrack here, American Magic will be back on port. Tack now heading to the right hand side. It's Ben Ainsley and Giles Scott. What, what do you want to do here? Well, if they can get back to the middle of the race course, we've seen a lot more match racing than we ever expected. So if they can get back to the middle of the race course with a little bit of runway to the right side of them, back towards the right side boundary, uh, might be just a little too thin, right? You might have to give yourself a little more runway. You don't want to tack too many times. Um, I think if it were Terry Hutchinson and Dean Barker, they would be tacking on the other boat right now. But right now, I don't know. A little tight, a little tight for multiple maneuvers here, Nathan, for my liking. Back to the middle of the race course for Ineos, so they made me look semi-smart on that one. It's hard to make me look smart, but that's semi-smart. Really smooth maneuvers so far, don't they? With the, with the tax and jives, there's nothing, nothing in it for, for the way I see it right now. Yeah, it's a, and I guess it's a balance of how aggressive you are to race the other boat versus how much you want to sail your own race and the breeze and the course geometry. You know, if they tack directly on American Magic, they'd hit the boundary too early and an extra tack, whereas they probably looked at and thought, if we tack here, we stay in check, and maybe we can still make the top mark with one tack to go. Surely you've got a close-up view of how Ineos Team UK are bearing right now. It looks a, a different bow to what we're used to seeing, doesn't it, Stephen? I mean, and they're that confident. They're, they're, as Nathan said, they've been sailing their, their own race here. They've just been, you can see the big puffs of breeze dropping and, and they're just sailing into the puffs, joining them together and eventually getting to this top right-hand corner where it is so breezy. Ben Ainsley has said, we do love breeze. He says, we still don't know about light here, but we, quote, need to be competitive across the whole wind range. 
Okay, I'm ready. Two, one, one more down. Huge sign that they have a smaller jib on than their competitor. We just literally haven't seen that. They've struggled. They've really worked to have to create power. And obviously, something has changed dramatically that they get the switch down. We'll have a look at their foils here. Remember in December they were red. And now the foils there, they're black. So surely that's not just a paint job change. Surely they've done a little bit more than just getting out the black spray paint and saying, well, this should make this go quicker. You don't think it's just a, the color palette of the whole boat they're working with right <laughs> Graphic designs makes the boat go faster, right? You never know. You never know. Let's uh, have a little listen to Giles and Ben discuss this top mark approach. So maybe a lefty on the bows. Yeah. Watch a little light out of this bullet, lads. Should we on that? No lower for red. Okay, copy. Lay line on the box is in five. Okay, setting up. Crossing. My pitch. Yep. Ready. Two, one, four down. Bit lighter out of this. Copy. Yeah, good. Easy on trim just for a sec. Yep. Okay. on. Good on flat now. My wheel. My wheel. Yeah, you got it. Main on. All the way up. Up a, up a touch here. Yep. Okay. Like a rebound. Coming away. Three, two, one. Uh, coming down, wheel. Okay. Halfway through the Power opening up. race, the Prada Cup 2021 between Ineos Team UK and American uh, Magic. Right Remember, at the end of leg two, right. the gap is 19 guys. seconds. Yeah, we're okay. We're okay. Yeah. Wow, this is... It looks like out of phase here for American Magic too. They're coming back. They're, their angle coming back toward this gate was not good. So th this is this is a struggle getting worse right now for for the for the Americans. Another tap. American Magic finally get around and complete leg number three, but the gap to Ineos Team UK has blown out to 47 seconds. Wow. Wow, it's right. I, we, we may, for those of you following America's Cup, we may sound uh, quieter than usual because I think we're all a little bit in shock. Although, you know, I, when the day I went sailing with American Magic, Terry told me he is very fearful of this British group, and I was kind of thinking, ah, uh, just saying that, you know, but obviously they might have known something. Let's take a look at how quick Enios Team UK are rolling right now, sitting around 41 knots going downwind. I mean, this be like this is the fastest ever America's Cup. Well, if you just look at the race to this point so far, they wanted the right hand side clearly as a, a race tactic. So they took the right in the start, they've protected the right the whole way around. This right hand side. So the, the right hand side, as I was saying, has been strong. North head, breeze is funneling down that side. They haven't once let American Magic get to that side. So they're obviously fast enough to be in the race and they've been positioning themselves well. I mean, just listen to the conversation on board. It sounds so confident. When they use the word lads a lot, that means I think they're, in compo they're composed. That's my, that's my trigger word on, on board. You know, they're, they're happy and they're having fun. Yeah, there's something to be said for that. It's easy, it's, it's easy to have fun when you're winning, too, by the way. They made it quite clear that the gap between the, the World Series prior to Christmas in 2020 and to the start of this particular time was invaluable with the amount of change that they made. But as you have said to us before on many occasions, you both have said, this is still about development. They are developing as every race goes, but this is almost like a lightning bolt development. We're watching unfold. But they, 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 Ben said in the press conference yesterday, they changed almost everything. So let's keep that into consideration. Okay, two, one, four down. Okay, good. Turning up. You never can. Got some negative there. Okay, good. 47 seconds was the gap after leg three. Now we're going to find out what it's like 
after leg number four. They, they are some kind of confident. That's about as hard a maneuver as it gets that they just pulled off right there. I'm sorry, guys, but is anyone else thinking they've been sandbagging <laughs> until today? You went, oh, you, you no, went no, there. No, no, you no, went no, there? No, no. But check it out. It's unbelievable what we're seeing here. We've been talking all summer, all Christmas, about what is going on here. You know, we've been saying, how are they so far behind? And then they're just coming out and just being dominant. Like, where did this come from? Do you think they're surprised as much as we are? I do, yes. I mean, yeah, they changed the mast, the sails, the foils, the rudder. They, they changed everything, uh, absolutely everything, except for maybe their clothes. I'm not so sure. American Magic complete leg number four of six. One minute and eight seconds. It's blown out from 47 seconds, which was at the completion of leg number three. And Enios Team UK, that boat on screen right now is quite simply flying, Shirley Robertson. Well, Stephen, I know talking to the Ineos team, there, there's still some concerns about sub-30 knots in wind speed. Thank goodness. They've made such an improvement in this medium range. They are flying and they are confident. As Kenny said, there is hardly a piece of that boat left. In three and a half weeks, they have changed everything. The same foils, just slightly uh, adapted, same foils that they had pre-Christmas. We're looking at them now, but also, you know, the whole rig, really different. And to me, the rig just looks more powerful, more adaptable, and uh, and they're sailing like, like they're fast. Shirley, does this come as any surprise to you? Not really. I mean, this is the game, Stephen, isn't it? Every day, just just move it forward, and I think there'll be more to come. Not just from this team, but but all of them. And they have, you know, some of the best technicians and smarts in the business. Every team, and so in three and a half weeks, they can achieve a lot, and that's exactly what we're seeing right now. Nice. Man, this makes our job right, easier. When everybody's the in the game, the it, I mean, how would yeah. you pick? How would you yeah. pick this? First of all, that, you couldn't. You and okay, secondly, yeah. this whole series is Could wide be. open right now. This is going to make for a fascinating four or five weeks. I can tell you nice. that. My goodness. Terry right. Hutchinson was asked a question yeah. about uh, any old TV guy, and, and he was he was bed. quite circumspect. He says. No. Believe nothing. Believe nothing. They are a very, very strong team, and we are very aware we of what we're up against. Turn, but I, think I don't think the right they expected yeah, to I be agree. a minute and eight so seconds behind here, at the at end of the nice fourth leg. Right the they're, they're just playing their own race course here, Keeping too, Nathan. They're, they're very clearly okay, just a small check-in with the with the boat behind you from time to time, but they're connecting the dots on this race course, which are the dark patches, as good as you can. Ball coming, by my pitch. Okay. Touch your name. They're very calm on board, aren't they? You know, they're having good conversations. Pressure better, ain't on right turn they again. Yeah, I agree. Head, so I mean, Giles just said, right turn again. They've me. found the geometry yeah. and they just want to follow it around. So we'll just follow their chat here. But It'll be a little hold impressive. before the bear away, though, yeah. right, Ben? Yeah, well, slightly softer right. patch here. Main on. Yeah, be about eight seconds out of this tank. Nice there. A little softer here. Okay, set up, let's crossing. Might go pitch. Okay, ready. Two, one, board down. You good? Turning. Okay, soft punch. Holding for five. Okay, go for this bear. Three, three, two, one. On. Bow down. Nice. Nice and gentle, nice and gentle. My wheel, I've got it. Okay. And that is the last okay. rounding of the gate as they the head on the homeward leg. Ineos Team UK, Britannia, is on the homeward run, and the 
Your key can see in front of you is American Magic yet to complete the fifth leg. I cannot wait to hear the onboard audio when Ineos when they get to the finish line and the relief and the, jo the joy at potentially, at this stage, because you're still going to say potentially, getting a first up win on day one of the Prada Cup. They're just selling their own race. It, 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 this is just a, a confident team that had a game plan going back to the start, had a game plan to connect the dots on the race course as puffy, shifty, in-harbor stadium course really lends itself to just playing the shifts. And, and that's all they're doing right now. And they're, they're playing the shifts and the geometry beautifully. American Magic for the final time in the opening race of Prada Cup Round Robin 1, Race 1. The top gate for the final time. And the gap has not changed. One minute and eight seconds. So they're not catching them back, are they? They're not, they're not coming back into them at all there. It might have been a ley line. So these two, day, two race days, Nathan, are tough because Ineos, they're going to have another shot at. So they lose a race. At least they got another shot to, to get in, to, to, get a, to get a race win in. Americans got to stop at the end of this and no more racing and wow shake it off I mean we're, listen we're early in the series these are veterans these, these we've all won and lost races before they're going to shake it off no problem but this has to be a bit of a shock this is a great story Yes, Nathan suggests that was sandbagging, but this is a great story. I'm not going with that. I'd, I'd just like to go on record right now. I am not of the sandbag mentality, but there's no way anybody has the guts to sandbag like that. That would be world-class sandbagging if that's what they were doing. And the Christmas, uh, not the Christmas race, but the World Series prior to the Christmas of 2020, that boat there got close to 50 knots. We know it's been quick. They've just had to find the right mix of everything. On what we are seeing right now as they approach the finish, they're doing okay. Just looking at the overhead shot, it's so clear. More pressure on one side than the other, and they've, they've never even crossed the center of the course. That's how obvious it is. Yeah. Stick into their game plan and sailing okay. tactically really well. Nice move. Okay, board up. High pitch. My wheel. Okay. Pressure going back in three. Building here, 34s. A little light here, Blitz. Yep. Okay. Coming up. Happy here. Yeah, it's good. Finishing Ineos here. Ineos Team UK, they yeah. couldn't Two buy a win. Coffee and the World oh, no, Series pre-Christmas 2020. And they have come out in round robin one, race one in the Prada Cup 2021 and annihilated one of the favorites, American Magic. Ineos, Team UK, win Prada Cup race one and get the first points on the board. Two, one, cross. That's a better one. Okay, awesome job, guys. Well done, guys. Nice work, guys. Nice. Bloody good effort out, chat. Unbelievable. I I'm sorry. <laughs> what a turn of events. Absolutely remarkable, and it gives you an idea of the development of these boats and how quickly you can go from zero to hero. And uh, hey, now they got to do it all over again. Well, if you're Luna Rosa, Prada Pirelli watching this right there going, Okay, chaps. Oh, boy. Yep. <laughs> well, at least they've got a good indication of what side of the course is favoured. So this next pre-start, there is going to be a battle. Unless the weather changes, there's going to be a battle to win that side of the course, that right-hand side of the course. And a crazy battle, too, against two uh, Jimmy Spittle, well, Ben Ainsley. Three of them. Uh, and Francesco Bruni <laughs> as well, because uh, it was elbows out for uh, Spittle earlier this week. American Magic. They were one minute and eight seconds behind at the penultimate mark. They will be further behind as they finish race one in the Prada Cup. The final margin, one minute and 20 seconds. I'm going to go out on a limb and say not many people had that on their Prada Cup 
uh, betting, you know, uh, internal office office pool. Let's yeah. call it their product cup office pool. I, I, not many people had that would have had the guts for that one. Got to go onto the water for Shirley Robinson because Shirley, that just stands out as a a, a perfect way to start this product cup. Boy, did they need it. It's been a tough month, isn't it? And that's only what we know. I'm sure their battles were going on longer than that. And this team has worked night and day to get this performance today since we last saw them before Christmas. We got a glimpse of it earlier in the week in, in the, the warm up, uh, the warm up racing, the practice racing. Ben Ainsley came out firing. It was like a a pre-boxing match weigh-in, you know, he just came out uh, all guns blazing. And I think, you know, he really felt then that he had a, a machine that could compete. And today, goodness, what a faultless race from, from this British outfit. So final result, Enios Team UK, Sailing Britannia, get the first win in the Prada Cup with a one minute and 20 second win against American Magic. The start of this race kind of really almost determined the race, and it didn't look like it was it was really going to be too much of a big deal. Two boats started fairly evenly, but I'm convinced that Ineos wanted the right-hand side of this race course desperately. The way they set themselves up for for the positioning on the start, and they led they led American Magic off to the right. They're actually a little behind. They lost on that first on that first uh, boat speed contest. But boy, oh boy, did they find the breeze to the right. We can say all day long, it's really simple to say things like, wow, they're super fast. But that's a puffy, shifty race course. And all of us who have sailed know too well that big shifts can make for big gains and really make you look good. So all, I, I give full credit to Giles Scott, their tactician today. For, for coming up with a strategy that led them in the right spot, that put them in the right position. Even going around this mark, they got around into the breeze and developed a huge lead. And then they just sat smoothly from there, didn't they? Maneuvers were crisp. They obviously figured first lap, that side of the course was right. Let's just keep on that side of the course the whole way around. And you called that one, Nathan. That was a good, good. I don't think they ever crossed onto the left-hand side of the race course. That's how much, that's the, how desperately they wanted that right-hand side. Into the finish, a minute and 20 second lead for a boat that hadn't won a race yet. Wow. That's better one. Okay. Prada Cup, round robin one, race one, and the win by one minute and 20 seconds goes to Team Enios UK on the helm, Ben Ainsley. Ben, how good does that feel? Oh, it feels a little bit better than six losses or whatever it was. So, yeah, we left a little bit late, but uh, we managed to find the pace when it counts on time in this breeze. Ben, you got a little color back in your face again after after a brutal few weeks, I would imagine. Really nice job. And listen, just give us a little insight. Was the right-hand side of the race course just absolutely in play right off the starting line? The whole strategy, it was all to the right. Yeah, the right-hand side was stronger, uh, North Head, as we've seen in the races a couple of weeks ago, quite a big feature. Uh, Giles did a great job cooling the breeze and the guys sailing the boat fast and the handling. So it's a good team effort. And I've got to say, you know, that race was for the rest of the, the team back, you know, back in the, at the dock, our designers, our engineers, our shore team, our boat builders, you know, they've had just an epic two or three weeks turning this boat around. So this is for them and for our friends at Mercedes GP back in the UK who've also helped us a lot to turn this thing around. Hey Ben, it's Nathan Adderd here. Congratulations on the win. It was extremely impressive. I think you had the whole world stunned after that. And, you know, we never doubted you, but man, that's impressive. <laughs> we never doubted you. You got another race up. You, you've got Prada <laughs> coming now. No one ever doubted you. Exactly, so, yeah. Hey, look, guys, as I just said to the boys, we're a long way from out of the woods yet. That's one good race. 
and that's a huge motivator for our team. Hopefully we can, you know, make the most of that um, momentum now and keep moving forward. Well, that's that's my question. Prada's up next. What's what's the game plan? What can we expect to see from you guys? Well, we know Jimmy and Keko and the boys are going to be tough. They're great match racers. They've got a fast boat, and uh, this is an open course, so we're just more of the same for us. Get a decent start, sail fast and sail the shifts. Ben, congratulations. First points on the board, the Prada Cup. Great to see that smile. Congrats to the, you and the team. Thanks, guys. Let's go now to American Magic. Dean Barker is uh, waiting to uh, hear from us. Dean, uh, one minute and 20 seconds behind. Uh, can you can you tell us what went on out there? Yeah, um, it was, uh, you know, a pretty tough, uh, tough race. You know, we sort of got off the line in okay shape and, uh, you know, didn't really expect it to probably uh, be quite as um, big a difference at North Head. But, you know, clearly that, that was sort of the... Uh, gave the control to... to um, and he also, and, uh, you know, they, they started a really good race, you know, and you know, we, we definitely knew going into today that they'd, um, they were going a lot better from what we'd seen in the practice racing. And, uh, um, you know, while it may be a surprise for some, we, def you know, we definitely knew it was going to be, um, be pretty close. Dean, this race course, especially when it becomes so one-sided, we keep using the phrase, you can get your elbows out and really kind of prevent something, somebody from getting around. Once you, once you lose that first cross, Boy, it, it seems tough. It seems tough to have enough runway to get it, get it all back. Yeah, you know, we were, were sort of looking for a couple of opportunities. You know, there's certainly uh, areas straight away where, where we know we could have um, probably done a better job keeping it close and looking for another opportunity. But, you know, uh, you have to definitely uh, give it to uh, the Enios guys today in that race. They, they sold a, a very clean race and, um, you know, really, you know, shut down all the sort of the, the leverage that... Um, that we sort of needed. So, yeah, it's, um, you know, it, early days, it's one race, and, uh, you know, we're obviously, you know, would have much preferred to have come out with a win, but at the same time, it's um, it's a long series, and we've got to um, just keep improving. Yeah, Dean, Nathan Adage here. It looked like a, a tough race from the outset for you guys today. I guess, as you, you just mentioned then, it is a long series, and there's a lot to go. What's, what's the mentality now for the team, and how do you reset for tomorrow? Uh, nothing really changes, Nathan. It's, you know, for us, it's just, you know, like we, we uh, you know, I'm sure we'll, we'll look back through the race and all the sort of the key decision moments and just um, try and, you know, understand how we could have executed that race better. Um, you know, the, um, you know, there's probably one or two sort of key areas, um, you know, which ended up being the difference. And so, um, you know, when you're racing a boat, which is, you know, going just fine, it's, um, you know, you, you can't give them any... Uh, any sort of advantage, so um, you know they're definitely uh, just fine in terms of speed. So you know we're going to have to race them, you know, as we would any other boat. Dean, as always, thanks for your time. We look forward to seeing you on the water again tomorrow against Luna Rosa. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, thank you very much. One minute and 20 seconds, the advantage. Nobody in the world, except maybe all the other teams, picked a potential, potential Ineos result, but. Neither of you guys picked that sort of margin, did you? I don't think anybody on the planet except for Nathan here, my, my buddy here, sucking up to his friend Ben Ainsley, saying, none of us ever doubted you. That, I cannot believe that came out of your mouth. <laughs> After saying he called, he was, that was sandbagging. How does that one go oh, as well? I don't know. I never, mean, never Nathan's right, looking for never, a job. Never right off Ben Ainsley. <laughs> you, were, you were in San Francisco. Yeah, this is upwind speed, the UK boat going fast. Downwind speed, the UK boat going fast. Uh, even, well, maximum speed, that's a fun That's a fun number. Really doesn't mean a whole lot. But when you're going faster and sail a shorter distance under distance sail, well, guess what? You're going to win every single time. And uh, sure, even, even they did a couple more maneuvers, but that was to take the correct side of the race course and to keep themselves in breeze. Sure enough, it worked perfectly. Let's take a look at the efficiency of how Enios Team UK have picked up the very first point in the 2021 Prada Cup. So, Nathan, the one thing that sticks out with me is every time we've seen their maneuvers, we've seen them absolutely go slower in most of the maneuvers in tacks and jibes, and those are those big dips. The bit, the, but this time around, they look to be okay. Maybe not perfect, but okay. Yeah, well, a couple of them, they're even got in, having high bottom speeds. You know, we're looking at bottom speeds here in the tacks. 
they're all above 20 knots. Yes, some of the dips are a bit lower, but on average, you'd almost say they're, they're tacking better. And we really look at the bottom numbers here. These bottom, these bottom numbers all along, all along here, that bottom number as, as it pertains to uh, how slow they go in the maneuvers. And, and they were desperately slow in their maneuvers leading up to these events. And here they are, you gotta, you gotta say equal. It, equal at worst at this stage. Break it down as much as you want, but the result stands. Any else Team UK get the first point. It's the key moment. Yeah, for me, this is the key moment, Nathan. And this is, he just, they wanted the right-hand side. They allowed American Magic to go back early and to lead back. Typically in a match race, that's a dominant position, leading back on an upwind start. But they just wanted the right side. Yeah, and as you can see here, they are wide and right, as we would call it. They have the starboard advantage. There's a decent distance between the two boats. American Magic can't tack. They've got to wait till the boundary to get that tack in. So that's a very controlling position there for Ineos. They left, they even left this position early to get to the right side even quicker. So we could tell from Dean Barker's comments, they may not have been as committed to, obviously weren't as committed to the right side, especially in the upper right hand side of the race course where Shirley told us the best breeze was. And uh, sure enough, it cost them. we play, it's crucial to know the rules of the game. When the boats are approaching on opposite tacks, if they hold their course, they'll collide. So who has the right of way? The answer is the yellow boat. It has the wind coming across the right-hand side or the starboard side of the boat, putting them on starboard tack. And starboard tack has right of way over port tack. So in this situation, yellow has all the power and can hold its course, while poor old blue has to get out of the way. Blue stays out of the way by either changing course to pass behind or tacking underneath, likely costing them time in either case and potentially putting them into turbulent air from the yellow boat. This applies whenever the boats meet, either upwind or downwind. Here's a case and example courtesy of the starboard tacker, Emirates Team New Zealand, and American Magic. What do you think we're crossing? Team New Zealand has the right of way, and American Magic has to get out of the way. Definitely turned down after we went behind, maybe behind them. Chance for you to learn this game we call sailing and the Prada Cup, the Challenger Series. Only one can go and face defender Emirates Team New Zealand in the match, the 36th America's Cup. And New Zealand loves their sailing and they have come out on a glorious summer's day in Auckland to watch the first and many might say upset of the Prada Cup. Yes, early days, gentlemen, but wow, one minute and 20 seconds and Ineos Team UK face Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli up next. Let's go into the water because I just want I want some to, for, for Shirley to break it down how she feels right now about that particular one and the way it was won, Shirley. Well, this America's Cup's all going to be about precision and execution, and I think we've just seen we've just seen a real sign from Ineos Team UK that they're they're back in the game. <laughs> You know, it was it was very calm on board. The speeds were high, and uh, and the execution was was so good. So it's going to be such a battle, isn't it, Stephen? And I'm really looking forward to this next match against Prada. Prada are very confident in the medium wins, as Nathan said. They've seen the racetrack; they know where to go. And boy, that's going to be such a battle to get to the right-hand side of the course. 
And that is something we look forward to because it's not too far away. The second race of Round Robin Race 1, it will be Enios Team UK against Lino Rosa, Prada Pirelli. The Prada 36th America's Cup World Series has given everyone a taste of what's to come. And there have been moments of glory like we've just seen, moments of complete failure. And time for skippers to reflect. At the end of the regatta, American Magic's Terry Hutchinson said, quote, everyone is going to get better. So we have to keep our heads down and keep working. So what lessons were learned? Had a couple great days sailing uh, since the World Series event, and you know you can take uh, the information that we have at the time and see how uh, good or bad we were sailing the boat. Moment of holding your breath for American Magic. You heard Dean Buck say, "Over, over." And we know through that event we left a lot of um, we left a lot, left a lot on the table. Um, and you can also see two challengers that are going to be quite, you know, formidable. I think the boat was going pretty well. You know, it was disappointing to um, lose uh, the first race that we lost to Prada. Yeah, well, you know, it was a bit frustrating, to be honest. It was disappointing, obviously, to lose the second race that we lost to Team New Zealand. Um, in both those matches, uh, we won the first cross. And so, you know, when you get the lead, you need to stay in the lead. You know, sitting here, we know why. We know what we can do better. And you know, that's probably the beauty of the event is it gives you the opportunity to learn those things without it really costing you anything. Plenty of action coming up here, ladies and gentlemen. The return of the upwind start is, is really good for the event and really good for the interaction between the boats. You know, uprange, I think we're gonna see these things get a little bit out of control. What's the bound? Hey! No protest here. The team that can best manage that um, boat handling exercise that the boats go through, as well as race the boat aggressively, uh, you know, those are gonna be hard teams to beat. I've got a swing in behind. Yeah. I think we want to win the first cross. And if you win the first cross, then you control your destiny. And make sure that the boat's going fast. You know, there's obviously great differences in boat speeds in between a boat that's going well and not well. And it's measured in hundreds of meters. And so the trick there is when you're behind to keep it close and when you're ahead, don't be afraid to sail in a tight race. Um, and at the same breath, when you have the opportunity to extend, you should. The fastest boat's going to win. And so... Our trick is to make sure that we have the fastest boat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think the results are, um, in a lot of ways, they're already predetermined, and the results is based around your preparation. However that first race goes, that's going to be indicative of our preparation for the Challenger Selection Series and then on to the match. And so I view each racing opportunity as another way to measure ourselves against the competition and also against you know, our preparation. We are at the business end of the regatta. I think we're incredibly hungry. You don't see them, but there are chips on my shoulders. <laughs> and uh, we're all born to race, and so that's what we do. So I think we're all excited by, by the opportunity in front of us. Terry Hutchinson and American Magic being towed back into base. Uh, just quickly, Kenny, he said, well, how we go in that first race is indicative of our preparation. Well, they, he also said first cross. And this upwind starting first cross has come back into play just like any other match race in the world. But Nathan, are you surprised they're towing in right now? They've only been sailing for a little over an hour. These are, these are teams that spend like eight hours a day sometimes. I'm really surprised they're not back out there testing and training. Yeah, I'm really surprised too. You know, if that had been me, you know, losing that first race, We'd be out somewhere else on the on the water doing a bit of training and fixing the things that we don't think are perfect because we didn't win. So we, we've got to keep keep at it. And then they are just towing back home. Yeah, I'm surprised. More racing still to come. So the question here, what is the secret to success? Well, some say it's commitment, hard work, dedication, and a positive attitude. Others say it's failure. For Ineos Team UK, the World Series and Christmas race, and it's an event they'd probably rather forget. But Subian Ainsley is determined to turn those defeats into success. 
In the build-up to the event, we knew that we had some issues uh, in our performance, and that was just magnified when we started actually going up racing against the opposition. Enios Team UK sailing for the British Royal Yacht Squadron and helmed by the most successful sailor in Olympic history. They may have come here looking to reverse the course of history, but right now, the British boat, well, they're struggling. Still got no board down on this side. Well, the positives are that it highlighted just how off the pace we were, and perhaps if we hadn't had that event, maybe we could have fooled ourselves into thinking that a few tweaks here or there and we would be on the pace when clearly we were a long way off the pace of the, all of the other teams. As frustrating as it was in many ways, it was a hugely positive event in, in being able to turn the team around. You know, the issues with our performance were in a few key areas, one in particular, which we've identified and we've tried to rectify. We've made a lot of changes to the boat, as you'd imagine. You know, I'm not really at liberty to say what they are because we're in a technical race, but needless to say, they're significant. I'm sure all of the other teams have done, and we've seen modifications to the other teams, so it's going to be fascinating to see you know, the step changes and performance jumps that the teams have made between the World Series and the Parada Cup. Experience that I've had, be they good or bad, in being on the back foot, you know, those experiences help massively in situations like this where it'd be easy to panic and for people to really lose their heads and the team to, to drop. And so we've got a lot of experience in this team. And you hear a lot about sort of siege mentality in sport and I've experienced that on a number of occasions. Now I've got that feeling about this team that when you go through something that we went through, you either sort of stick your head in the sand and hope it'll all go away or you, you're pretty you know, honest about what's going wrong and you, and you try and sort it out and you work incredibly hard to do that and the, our team has certainly taken a latter approach so we couldn't have done more to resolve the issues that we've had. We're up for the fight, we're looking forward to trying to prove a few people wrong. Yeah, I want to get out there, get racing and win some races. And job done by Sabine Ainsley and Enios Team UK in race one of the Prada Cup. They got the win, a minute and 20 over American Magic. Wow. Glorious scene, Auckland Harbour and the Hauraki Golf, the Waitamata and Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli are next to face the winners of race one. And that will be Ineos Team UK. Nathan Outeridge, Luna Rosa would have looked at this and gone, right, OK, we're in for a game. Uh, does this, these conditions, you think, suit them going into the next race? Well, I think the breeze is building out there and you know, Luna Ross's strengths are lighter breezes and I think they would have been a bit shocked looking at that and they know they've got to sell almost spot on to beat Ineos now. Heavier, heavier wind, maybe a little brittle, maybe a little unstable, Luna Rossa? They've complained about that, no, there's no question. They've complained about steering problems going around corners and, and right on the edge of control, but you know what, these are also, these are smart. These are smart uh, teams, smart people that learn how to fix things, whether it's on the fly or certainly back in the shed. So from day to day, we're gonna, we could see completely different boats and, and completely different uh, um, ways they set up these boats. It's really fantastic. It's all, it's all fun and games, and we're just gonna sit back and watch. So for Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, pride is now very much on the line. They've got huge support today at the village. The Prada Cup bears their name, and they're determined to be the first to claim it as their own. Etch their name into the silverware. They have the desire to win, but will they quench that thirst for victory? I'm happy with this. Yeah, good pressure in front. Uh, yeah. Good pressure coming in front. Well, it's been great to have uh, all those videos and numbers and uh, everything showing up of uh, our opponent. 
We have been working for uh, more than two years without having any idea of, of all the other teams. And now, after three days of racing, we had all the numbers, all the data, all the uh, insight of every boat. And I think uh, it's been a massive learning for not just for us, but for every team. Look at those speeds. 43 odd knots by Italy. I mean, you'd have to say flawless boat handling at this stage. These last weeks have been uh, very chaotic, crucial. Uh, lots of modifications to the boats, to the foils, to the sails, um, on every department. And, uh, and at the same time, we want to be in the water as much as possible. Uh, faster, more faster. Aerodynamics is a lot of this game and uh, the boats are getting better and better every day. Uh, we have done some modifications to our hull. We have been building new fairings, uh, trying to make the boat uh, uh, less draggy as possible. I think the boat is going a lot better now. Three, two, one, four down. I think uh, this product cup is going to be very tough because uh, there are no weak uh, teams. Oh, every team is very strong, full of uh, strong sailors, strong engineers, uh, very reliable short teams. And uh, it's going to be very good racing, very fun, uh, full of action racing. I've got a swing in behind. Yeah, we need to swing behind. I've said it before, for me, the more we race these boats and the more time we spend with the boats, we are going to see a lot of more action day after day. Any feeling? Four. Go. Keep trying. Two, Hang three. On. Watch it. Lay line still. No, don't turn. I think uh, everybody is getting more comfortable with the boats. Um, every team is going to push more. The boats are going to get closer uh, and closer, and uh, we are going to see a lot of action. And uh, I think as Luna Rossa, we feel quite strong on it. We do feel the crowd behind us in Italy. We, we feel it, we hear it. For Italy, it's a big thing. America's Cup is a big thing. And uh, we are very proud to have the Italian flag uh, flying on top of our base. Jimmy Spittle on the left, Francesco Bruni on the right, the twin helm of Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, and they are into the Prada Cup game next against race one winner, Enios Team UK on the beautiful Waitemata Harbour. It's on race number two of the Prada Cup with Sir Ben and his men. Ineos Team UK started this program claiming that lessons learned from their last America's Cup effort would serve them well. Well, based on the results of race one, maybe they're just late bloomers. A surprise victory for many, but I'm guessing not for this group. Off the schneid, and maybe it's time to get on a bit of a roll. The building breeze certainly helps their cause, and with a competitive British team, this Prada Cup is seriously wide open. It could be argued, couldn't it, that you guys perhaps have the most to prove on the water. How hungry are you to make your mark today? We absolutely have the most to prove. Um, as I say, we were very disappointed with how things went last year. Um, we feel we've made big improvements and, yeah, for sure, we want to we wanna start winning races. Facing Ineos Team UK, the Italian challenge. Luna Rossa Prada Prelli are back again for another attempt to win this America's Cup. This will be their sixth attempt, having begun their quest back in 2000, competing here in Auckland. In a unique situation, helmsman duties are shared between Jimmy Spittle and Francesco Bruni. Jimmy on the starboard wheel, Bruni on the port. Both incredible sailors with decades of America's Cup experience between them. The team looks ready, and I bet they can't wait to go racing. Francesco, finally today, it matters. Sailing fans around the world are keen to see 
what you've got. How confident is the Luna Rossa team? I think Luna Rossa team is ready for the fight. Uh, we were really looking forward to the start of this and finally we are there. Uh, I'm very excited about it and I'm sure the whole team is. So it's round robin race one, should I say round robin one, race two, Enios Team UK, Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Enios Team UK on the left hand side of your screen on board, picking up that first win against American Magic by one minute and 20 seconds. They got better and better as the race went on against the Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli team that is quick, but are the wind conditions going to suit? 14 knots of breeze out there on the race course, Stephen, and that's kind of that middle range that we all talk about. It's really interesting for, for the Prada team, and maybe maybe we get Shirley's reaction. Shirley, is the breeze building, dying? What, what, what are the trends? Yeah, Kenny, the breeze is up a, a little bit. Uh, we've seen the British team change down a jib size, a so smaller jib for this race. Uh, I've also seen them go up and down a couple of times. They're right back into it. Uh, and as the breeze has come in, I've also seen them checking that left-hand side. Um, so maybe when I look to windward, it's more even as I look further up. But you would be wary, wouldn't you, to give anything away to North Head, to that right-hand side. So Nathan, I, I know for a fact that we watched the amount of effort that the, especially the grinders are expending out there. It seems that the trend has started to uh, kind of unfold that they're changing out somewhere between two or four people per race, bringing in fresh grinders and, and keeping that uh, engine moving. Oh, it's required. I remember when we were sailing in Bermuda, we were always changing grinders between races. The America's Cup boats, especially these ones, are very energy demanding, and you have to swap your grinders if you want to get maximum performance. And Enos has already done a race, so they would have done a change here. They would get fresh, fresh arms under the handles. Luna Rossa would have been warming up all day, and they're going to have their, their start crew coming up. So. That's a factor for sure. I just yeah, wonder if you're Luna or Soprata Pirelli having to wait around and, and then be the second race. And does that play on the head at all or not? No, you, you would have... Listen, this is a mental game as much as a physical game. So you're mentally preparing for the time that you have to be... And by the way, this is a three-lap race, and this is starting exactly on time. Well done to the people running the races, but they would have had that whole clock, that mental and physical clock going in their head for weeks now. They've, they've known for a couple weeks now when they were starting this race. All right, two minutes and 10 seconds. It'll be Enios Team UK who will have the port entry and Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli representing the Socolo della Vela Sicilia Club. Let's hear you say that one more time. You want to say that again? Wait for it. Just wait for it. A little bit late in port entry, but then it will be Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli representing the Socolo della Vela Sicilia Club. You are good. But don't do it right is the question. As you can see. Okay, good. Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, the Twin Helms. Coming out just a little behind, but now the Battle Royale, and this is what we've been looking forward to. Two guys, Nathan, or well, three helmsmen, that love to put their elbows out. Well, I tell you what, if, if the right hand side is as favoured as we keep talking about, both boats are going to be fighting to be. Windward, windward boat, you know, the right hand boat off the start. And Ineos already sort of sailing downwind away from Luna Rossa Parada Pirelli. Let's just listen on board and try and get a sense of what they're really focusing on in the this start. Just fantastic hey, strategy. We're gonna, we're cool. really gonna get, start to get a feel for the strategies. And you have, this is not just, they're not just winging it out there, Nathan. They, they've talked about this strategy for a while, and as to, uh, they probably have a playbook as to which play they're gonna run. Crossing five seconds to pin. One, four down. And turning. Luna Ross going to go around to Lord here and they're thinking an easy hit. But man, that was a great attack by Ineos. This is a lot more combative than the last one. Big one here, boys. Push, boys. There we go. This is all about time and distance for Ineos right now. Are they on time for the line? If they are, they're in a dominant position. If they're not, they're a little bit vulnerable. I'm just looking to start at race two. 
round robin one of the Prada Cup. You can see the clock. 20 seconds and counting to go. Yeah, Prada is way late at this stage. Totally in control. Looks like a left hand shift and in control by Ineos. Perfect timing to put themselves in this position and lead back. A little further. Three, two, one, four down. And they are away. Oh, no, and just, race oh, no, number two of the Prada Cup. Oh, Ineos once again in a good That's position. Right, right. Not a good position, That's a great right, position. Right. They they led back when they had to lead back on this one. They were they they realized they were probably going to be a little late for the starting line. And again, with a smaller jib versus their competitor. So they I think their efficiency. They think they're way more efficient at this stage. I'm okay, Blitz. Copy that. It's good, mate. It's even. Left shift at the moment, so we're in base here. Look at how much higher they're selling off this camera. They are not just going faster. They've got better height, and they've forced Luna Ross to tack already to the unfaded side. So, wow, that's impressive. It's very impressive. And it's windier on the right. You can see Luna Ross going to the left. It's lighter on the screen over there. It's it's definitely less wind where Luna Rossa are hitting. So if we can hold that shot for a second, this is this is really light air. It looks to me on the water, much much lighter breeze in that area. You can see a puff from the upper left hand side of the race course, but for the most part, this is still a light dominant race course as as we see from the helicopter. Shirley Robinson on water for us, double Olympic gold medalist. If you're going to do it right, you might as well do it two times in a row. <laughs> Ben Ainsley bossed that start, didn't he? I mean, that was that was textbook. What a what a great start to this race, and has now control of the right hand side. It's a good three or four knots windy. We're on the right hand side. You're taking our shot at the moment. It's white horses over here, and it's flat uh, to the left. So it's just going to get better and better. They're going to get richer and richer. Yeah. Yeah. Intersection for the left. You are watching around the world. This is race number two of the Prada Cup 2021 on the waters of Auckland Harbour, the Hauraki Golf, the White Matar. And this is Enios Team UK against Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli at the top left view of your screen. Who are the challenger of record? And Enios Team UK have already bagged their first win against American Magic. Yeah. Not as big of a gain as I was expecting, but I do expect them there you go to tack right on the face of Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. They have a strategy of protecting that right hand side, and even though that time it wasn't a strong gain for them, right now you expect them to just slowly eke it out as they put disturbed wear on Luna Rossa. Both are flying on the way, similar on the way, speed, on the way, so they're both in a good position. Nicely in your dirt, you heard Giles Scott say, which means they think they were throwing disturbed air off of their sail plan onto Prada, and sure enough, they have to tack away and get out of it. That wasn't a tactical decision by Luna Rosa. That was a absolutely just sailing in disturbed air and good match racing move by Ineos. Okay, crossing. Two, one, four down. Turning. So high chance they're going to do a repeat of race one where they'll approach the top marks on starboard, make a tack, take the right hand turn, and um, you know, that was a good gain for them every other race. So let's just listen in and see if that's their strategy again. Come back through some light stuff. You got 10 seconds, Charles. Yeah, on the 10 seconds on the other tack. I'm going slow on that red and black boat down there at the top of our screen though they're keeping it close even if we think they're on the un unfavored side of the course they're not going slow see the speeds of both the boats on the bottom of your screen that's course okay three Top gate for the first time, and once again for the second race in a row, it is Enios Team UK leading on the downwind leg of six. Let's check on the gap to Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Two, two, one, betting away. Yeah, full clear, full clear. And the clock stops at 15 seconds, so a similar margin to that they had on American Magic. But not a, not a great bear away there with Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. We see them touch down. Just, we lost that picture, but 
Both boats are heading to this boundary. Both boats are trying to go to this right hand side of the course once again. But look at that lead already 300 meters. You know, one thing that interesting thing that Dean Barker said in the interview after that first race was that they didn't do enough job, uh, good enough job staying patient and keeping it close and looking for the rock. They kind of forced the issue. But Prada is not doing, Luna Rosa is not doing that in this race. They're keeping it close. Wait for your opportunities. Don't try to find something that isn't there. Really good point, Ken. You know, if you're splitting, you've got to have a good reason to split. Generally, the boat that's winning takes the favoured way around the track. They take the pressure, they take the shifts. If you're going the opposite way to them, a high chance you're going to be making a loss. Some 40 knots being travelled by Enios Team UK at the moment. If you want to know what that is in different speeds, that's around 46 miles an hour or 74 kilometres an hour, whatever country you use those uh, numbers for. Uh, that's pretty quick on the water. <laughs> Put your head out the window in a rainstorm on the way home, uh, Stephen, in your, in your car, and, and you'll have a pretty good feel for what these guys are going through. Yeah, oh, a lot of bugs in your teeth. We're OK going back to lay here. <laughs> There's the left chef at the moment, and the pressure is okay. Yeah. Copy, I think we just milk this out as much as we can. Oh, nice there. Yeah, keeping on our numbers here. Good gains. Doesn't okay. make a magical sight. 75 foot falling mana holes. Pressure is a little racing better each other okay, yeah, on a down. glorious Copy. summer's day in Auckland City. Race two, round robin one of the Prada Cup 2021. And all the chatter right now is about that boat and that team. Enios Team UK couldn't bag a win in the World Series. They've already got the first point on the board. Early days here, Nathan, but I'll tell you what, uh, a lot of people eating a little crow right now when they uh, when they counted Sir Ben out of this one so long ago. He'll this is very right impressive right, so far. Yeah. yeah, copy that. Soft off yeah. the straight drive. Uh, it's a team oh, effort though, isn't it? It's yeah. a huge team effort. Big, guy, yeah. big, big move by him in between uh, in between the races when we were interviewing him, calling out sure everything that has happened back in that shed, gone. the long hours, Bye, the boys. people who who uh, aren't in the limelight, but certainly should get as much of the credit. I know it's early days, but I just want to quote the late Sir Peter Blake about the America's Cup for this one reason, because of what we've seen from Enios Team UK. He says, it's not a game for the person who's not prepared to come back. Lord knows Luna, Rota, Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli has come back many a time. Turning up here. Two, one, up all the way. Enios Team UK round the bottom gate for the first time. They were 15 seconds ahead of Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli at the top gate. What will it be at the bottom gate? Well, I think we can assume it comfortably if they've stretched their lead on the downwind leg. Turning up. Three, two, one. Here we go. Turning up. Two seconds, so they've added seven seconds on the downwind leg. They did that uh, really no, tough maneuver this. again. Again, attacking away the the from their competitor, Nation. Nathan. I mean, not your textbook match racing move, but they're just looking up okay, the Nation. course, looking for wind shifts. There's good pressure over here. More Should than they're playing their competitor tomorrow. right now. Yeah, you could hear, you you could hear the chat going up. downwind. It was all about getting back to that right hand side. They're sailing the wind, they're not sailing the opponent really at all. Three, two, What's one. Up? My right, my For those people who have done some match racing, it is a gutsy move to do what they did. You know, it's easier just to keep it close and stay right with, you know, keep, stay between your man and the hoop, so to speak, as, as the old phrase goes. But. Oh, it looks like it worked again, doesn't it? It's a sign of a confident sailor, confident team, confident boat. If you just sail where you want it to go and not worry about the other team, Look at this. That's, that's their confidence yeah, yeah. today, aren't they? I'm intrigued to know from you, though, Nathan, because they had huge problems with their, their foils uh, in the regatta yeah. before okay, Christmas. What do you think has changed? Because we know how important yeah, the foils uh, are with these monohulls. Well, I guarantee we'll you tonight at the press conference, that's going to be the big question. What have you guys changed? And Ben will 
smile and say nothing. Looking for you know? a nice but back from here, I think that they had some minor issues with those foils and they weren't working the way they wanted them to work. And I've said before, they're painted black now, but they're honestly... Smooth. They're smooth. We can't see these rivets anymore. You know, we, we used to see rivets all through this area and all through the area on the board. Oh, he missed it. He got me. And uh, without those rivets, without all those creases, they uh, they just look like different foils. They just could be some sort of fairing mechanism. Surely they have made huge changes to their falls, haven't they? Because they discovered they were having problems. Yeah, about a, a couple of days after uh, all the Christmas racing was over, they went out with, with cameras to actually have a look about what was going on, and they had massive amount of distortion in the foils. And I, I mean, a bit like sailing around with a bucket hanging over the back. You know, any kind of imperfection at that speed is massive. Also, those uh, our viewers who actually watched the Christmas racing will have noticed water coming out of the foils, and they were taking in water. So they, they've solved that problem, they've dealt with all the distortion, and as we can see, made massive progress. Luna Rosa is not making the error we talked about before. They're keeping it close and they're waiting for their they're waiting for their spot. So let's not give the British boat this race right now. They're actually sailing quite smart and obviously plenty fast on Luna Rosa right now. Uh, they got a little side, right hand side of the race course. It was the first yeah. time that Ineos let a boat get to the right hand yeah. side of them yeah. and they yeah. made a loss. And you heard Jimmy Spittle say, oh, we made a little gain there. That potentially was just the first mistake we've seen Ineos make today. They had a big lead, so they could afford to give up a little bit. And sometimes, as sailors, we like to give up a little bit of our lead because there's another reason further down the track, like maybe they're trying to avoid an extra tack. But Luna Rossa is not going away, that's for sure. Back to Heading towards the halfway point in Top race up. two you got 10 jars, fine. of the Prada Cup. You heard Giles Scott just say, gain back to us again. Every time somebody gets to the right of the other, it appears they make a gain. Well, Ken, aren't we lucky that there's a boundary up there and people have to keep tacking? Otherwise, it would just be one tack to the right-hand side of the course and no opportunities. There is land there, though, eventually. Land, land wins over carbon fibre. Approaching the top gate for the second time. The gap was 22 seconds at the bottom gate. Okay, holding the score. Three, two, one, yeah, now. Good puppy. Team UK complete three legs of this second race and round robin one. It was 22 seconds at the bottom gate. What will it be here? Have they made that small gain, Luna Rossa? Prada Pirelli that Jimmy Spittle suggested. All the way, Keko. Copy it. No issue with the mark. Copy, yeah. Nail me. Is it, is it They've lost a second. They've lost one second of the upper leg. They're struggling a little bit getting around these marks, though, aren't they, Nathan? They, they, they just, they, that's what they talked about during the practice racing the other day. Yeah, there they are. They're struggling with control going around that weather mark. It looks like something might be really wrong this time. T to me, it looked like what they ended up doing there was they had to ease a bit of main sheet during the bear away. And once they got through the power zone, it was really slow to come back on, so the hull touches down, it's in the water, and that's why you see Giles Scott always tacking, sailing 10 seconds and bearing away. If you're trying to do a tack into a bear away, it's way harder of a manoeuvre than to tack, build, and bear away. And Giles is saying that sailing a really good course geometry race, and the boat behind, they're not finding any opportunities to get back into it. That's why you call him the four a guru. That's what, that right there. That, Pressure that call is all right better there. inside yeah. here. Correct. Let us know anything we can go back. That is intersection on the box. I Yeah, okay, set up. Happy. Crossing. Your hedge. Fine. Two, ready. One. Board down. That's Turning. Ben and Giles talking about the course geometry, using the software, and they're not really looking at the other boat at all, are they? No. Okay, breeze here back in five. Give you a quick into this, Charles. Yeah, breeze building. Go that. Here we go. Working down. Keep okay, follows. Working down yep. now. Nice. Nice there, good angle. Need a lower mode. Yeah, we're just. Yeah. 
Stephen, we let these guys talk, but they're not going to need us any longer. This is just, this is brilliant, isn't it? To see the composure and the, the really articulate, quick bites on, on board the boat. Really good communication. Communication from a team that is in complete control right now. Crossing. Happy to ignoring ley line here, if Ben. You, uh, I'm ready. If you remember what they were like in the World Series, okay, and they, they got Two, caught, two they, one, they dumped, four, they down. did everything, and uh, it was like a team that had their heart ripped out with all this effort. It like took three that. years of preparation and work to get to that point, and they almost would have lost. And suddenly, in the science space of, what are we talking, two, three weeks? Look at what we're seeing. They, they are potentially going to be 2-0 and oh at the end of the first day of the Prada Cup. Two and the right way. Yeah, well. Yeah, correct. Well, like, way. well, I would have said I would too otherwise. Well, you, you saw the interview that Ben Ainsley made in our little feature earlier, and he was talking about just got to keep having games, you just got to keep believing. It's amazing what can be done if you just keep working the incremental games. You know, small gain on the foil unlocks something, small gain on the rig unlocks something, and you just slowly keep unlocking things. And if you sail, well, yep, and your boat's going nice. quick, yeah, you're eventually going to start winning races. And okay. so far, Stand it's two from two, but this Cross race is still not over. But holding, call it. Not laying in the bottom three, gate, so probably another jive by the looks of it. In. Could be a big One. gain for Prada. Now. Turning. Hey, again. Okay. Nice well. Gonna cut over. Turning up in three. Two. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Enios Team UK around the bottom hang gate on. for the second time. It's the completion of leg number four. At the top gate, they were 23 seconds ahead. And Prada made any gains. Or have Enios Team UK lengthened out? Here come Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli to complete the fourth leg. And it's still 23 seconds, so no gains. So now comes the time where we, we've been, we've been tell, we've been talking about how patient they've been. Keep it close, wait for the mistake. Nathan, if you're out there driving this boat right now, when do you then, not, you gotta take a chance sooner or later. So being patient all the way around the race course and following the person in and coming in second, it doesn't do you a whole lot of good. At some stage, well, this is a pretty big split. I guess if you're gonna be looking for something to, to wing it here a little bit, this is a big split. Chance at a game, but we haven't seen a left-hand shift all day, but it's a chance. Yeah, look at the, the timings on those gates, nothing in it, but right now, Kenny, the moment you've got to start hanging it out there. You've got to start getting some leverage. You've got, you know, you've you've been following them the whole way around, and they're not making errors. They're tacking, they're jibing well. Their ley lines are good. The course geometry is going really well for them. So you've got to do something different. Even if you think it's the wrong thing to do, you've got to start doing something different so that you can actually get some meters back and, and force the situation. Let's head on board Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli and see what's going through their heads right now. Okay, no lower, coming up a bit. Dip, 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 dip. Coming up. Okay. Good pressure straight ahead. Okay, they take the last look. Is it? Good link. Yes. Try to go a little faster here. Yeah, yeah. Good. Good there. 200, this is average. Francesco Bruni doing the commentating for us, talking about what he feels as he's steering on that left-hand side of the boat, how he feels and how whether he wants to go into a fast mode or a normal mode or a slow mode. Uh, this is just, and also the positioning of the other boat is just to the, in the left-hand uh, part of our screen. They tacked in line this time, did Ineos, and trying to control the race course a little bit more, not allowing for that big split. Take over the rolls will right. reverse, and Jimmy Spittle yeah, will be driving the boat, and you'll be hearing yep. his voice a lot more. And Francesco Bruni will go quiet, and he'll be focused on flying the boat. And you'll hear Pietro Sabello, the main trimmer, communicating with Jimmy Spittle. Two, one, here it is. Easy. 
good course geometry by the Reds right now, though. They tacked exactly in unison. So that is absolutely the old between your man and the hoop uh, maneuver of a ma of match racing. Fans back home, British fans will be very happy. You start breathing a little easier when you see the other boat exactly on top of your competitor like this. Yeah, considering if you're watching this in the uh, United Kingdom, it's early in the morning, and you just love your America's Cup. Any else Team UK have already bagged the first win of the Prada Cup round robin one, race number one. This is race number two. There are four round robins in this Prada Cup. The team with the highest amount of points at the end of the round robins goes directly to the Prada Cup final. And you've got to say, right out of the box, if any else Team UK get two points on day one, the whole dynamic changes. Everybody's thought processes changes about the Prada Cup. I called it. No, I didn't. I can't. No one called this. Don't even try. Well, actually, someone did. Someone did call this today. And that was Shirley Robinson. She did. She did. Shirley, did, did, did you, you really Shirley? call this? Did you call this today? Be honest. Okay, ball. Uh, <laughs> I did call this. You did? <laughs> and I think there is evidence. What do we think here? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess um, I've seen Ben Ainsley sucks. come back uh, time and time, time, time again, whether it's to win an Olympic gold medal or an America's Cup. He was part of that incredible yeah. win by Oracle in San Francisco. You know, he just, Two, one, four, he can turn it on. And uh, and I, I guess I have a glimpse of how hard the team has been working. And just seen, seen okay, some help uh, in, in the team as well. Okay, that they have solved at least some of the speed issues. Okay, powering up, not a large spot. Big power. Okay, on it. Final leg for Ineos Team UK. There has been a gain made, though, by Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. But for the second race in a row, they lead the race home. Well, they've cut 10 seconds out of the lead. They got a little bit on the right-hand side a couple times, sailed patiently, stayed on the right-hand side of the race course, and now they got a split. But, oh, look how light it is in that upper left-hand corner, Nathan. Well, that was the mistake American Magic made twice in the first race. So that left-hand mark just looks like it's sailing you into less pressure. And so every time you go over there, you're just committing yourself to a loss. So they make the game, but then, as we said, you can't just keep following and wait for an error. You've got to create an opportunity for something, and it doesn't look like it's paid off from it at the moment. I think the speeds of both the teams sitting at around 39 knots on the final downwind leg to the finish of race number two, round robin one of this Prada Cup. They're in that kind of one mistake zone right now, though. This is not a foregone conclusion, right? They're one bad mistake by Ineos, and they, they're ripping by. So this is this is not over, with, folks. It sounds like they're going to jive and keep on this part of the race course, going to the far boundary would be pretty high risk at the moment. Sure would, and leaving that, that fresh side of the race course. I'm even surprised they gave him this much uh, this much room out here on this bottom side of the of our television set, Nathan. It's probably honestly looking at the software and trying to just get it in two jibes to the finish. Um, you know, Luna Rossi here now aren't going to lay the finishing line from where they are, so they've at least got one more jibe to go. So it's a balance of pressure and software, and hey, who are we to second guess Giles Scott at the moment? That's for sure. Not getting they're not getting further uh, that's away. Cool. One side, you keep saying one side of a fast uh, boat is a boat that gets behind and doesn't get further Boundary behind. They've got this gap Light pretty much all the way around the race door, of course. So a uh, couple, couple strange mistakes Crocodile from Crocodile Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. And uh, besides that, two similar boats. Three. Yeah, two yeah, out, 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 out of the way at 40-odd knots, say 41 knots. They are really okay, in the groove right okay. now. Ineos Team UK heading towards the finish. Race two, round robin one of the Prada Cup Challenger Series. Now that looks like a big distance now. Yeah, game, game over. They got to the right, they got back in the pressure. 
Nathan, their, their maneuvers, that we've just never seen them this smooth. Uh, something has drastically changed under the water to make these maneuvers so smooth, whether it's the software being used to trim the flaps, whether it's the actual uh, foil shapes themselves, incredible. Enios, Team UK have the perfect start to the Challenger Series. They are two from two and two points and go to the top of the standing. What a way to start this Challenger Series. Yeah, we'll just, we'll just yeah. stay high and slow here, just to make sure. This is reset, so I'm going to take that. That's a good sign. We'll just uh, be sure of this, yeah. boys. And Luna Rossa, Prada Pirelli, who were 13 seconds behind at the penultimate mark, will finish 28 seconds behind. Stephen, I'm pretty sure they were, they're not positive they're, they just finished the race. They were just looking at their computer on how many laps yeah, they want to You over. lose it, right? You lose your mind oh, sometimes and how many times you go around the race course. I think that was, <laughs> we were told it was three times around the race course. I think these guys think it was, but I'm not so sure Giles Scott knew there for a second. So, Enios Team UK. A one minute 20 in second win of American Magic. A 28 second win. Nice. Against Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli. Let's just have a quick listen. Nice effort, boys. <laughs> Confirmation round robin one, race two of the Prada Cup. Ineos Team UK do it in just under 25 minutes, and the gap to Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli is 28 seconds. So now all the talking begins. What have they done to Rita, which is the favorite name of Ben Ainsley's Olympic boat? And so funnily enough, it's part of the name Britannia as well. And <laughs> the word wow is going to keep coming out for the next two or three hours because that's special. Around the sailing world. Nobody, nobody saw this was coming except for maybe the British, and I'm not even so sure they did. Hey, he did a great job leading back. In the first race, we saw them push because the boats were early. Ben Ainsley picked it up early on in the sequence that they were both going to be late and decides to lead back to the starting line ahead of the start and never looked back. They wanted that right side of the race course again, Nathan. That was very clear. They, they kept leaving their opponent on several occasions to keep going up the right side. This is that first tack, that long drag that you actually commented. Wow, they look, they don't, they don't just look fast, they look high at the same time, very close winded. Yeah, the same strategy executed differently from the first race. Get to the right hand side, win the right hand side, and normally you'd tack in this situation and go with Luna Ross. So they said, no, no, we're gonna stretch it out and make a gain here. And again, they made it, and they go around the top mark, they take that right-hand turn once again. It's as if they did a bit of pre-work before they went out there and said, you know, if the wind is strong on the right, this is our course geometry. And, you know, Spin small up. error there by yeah. Luna Rosso. Yeah. And little mistakes like that were just giving him seconds here and there and taking the pressure off the whole race once again. Another right-hand turn at the top mark. The boys are sounding smooth. The boat's clearly easier to sail than what it was three weeks ago, and it's faster. Super smooth on the last leg. Yeah, maybe they didn't quite know if they were finishing or not. Giles Scott looking around, wondering, wondering as they were going through that bottom gate. But they just played it right. They played the correct side of the course. They didn't look behind very often. They looked ahead. They connected the dots on the, on the race course on a puffy, shifty day. You know what? The wind shifts a lot of times are, are even are far more important than that little notch of boat speed. And today was one of those days. It has been an impressive performance by Enios Team UK on the opening day of the Challenger Series. It makes a beautiful vista, doesn't it? Auckland City with Mungweek and North Head on this stadium course, which has treated the thousands of fans that have turned out on this Friday afternoon to basically the story of the opening day. Couldn't bag a win in the World Series. Suddenly, they now, after day one, are the team to hunt down. Enios Team UK. 
Round Robin one, race number two, and for Enios Team UK, it is the perfect start, Ben Ainsley, two from two, and man, you are cooking on those starts. <laughs> hey, that's another one for the guys back in the dock. Yeah, I mean, uh, we yeah, can be happy with uh, how the boat went today, and the guys did a, an awesome job. Uh, getting the boat around the track, Giles calling the shifts and the pressure, and uh, yeah, yeah, quite some turnaround in these conditions. So Ben, really smooth. The, the big thing that stood out for us, forget the positioning and everything, was how smooth the boat is going. You, you've had some difficulties keeping uh, keeping the old girl steady from time to time. It looks like the foils are quite a bit different on the top of the foils. They look a lot smoother than we've seen. We don't see those rivets anymore. We don't see any cuts in the in the foil. They just look completely different. Is this a whole makeover, or are these just small bits and pieces? Yeah, the whole boat, frankly, has had a makeover. As you know, we can't do a huge amount to the hull of the boat, but pretty much every other component on the boat, be that the rig and sails, you know, the rudder, the elevator, the foils, the systems, how we control the boat. We pretty much changed everything. And again, that's credit to the designers and the engineers and the shore team. Those are the, those are the guys that work around the clock to make that happen. So uh, we're glad that we were able to do them credit out here on the water. Yeah, Ben, Nathan Adderchie, awesome work once again. And, you know, I know you've said it time and time again, but it's 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 a huge team effort, isn't it? And, and your team is had a very yeah. busy Christmas, as, as I'm aware, because I've got quite a few friends amongst your team. We haven't seen any of them on the holidays here. They've yeah. been busy, so no. awesome job. What do you do now? How, how do you keep developing? I'm sure you've got a few more tricks up your sleeve, right? Yeah, we do. You know, we still got to work on the lighter airs. We, you know, we're going well in this breeze and up, probably. We haven't sailed that much in 20 knots, but the lighter stuff, we still got a lot of work to do, and that's really what we're focused on. And yeah. We'll see, I think the forecast tomorrow is a little bit lighter. So a uh, long way to go in terms of getting the maximum out of this this boat across the range of conditions. And, uh, you know, obviously with that goal of getting through to, to the end of the Prada Cup. So, yeah, it's a good start, long way to go. Thanks for your time, Beard. As you say, good start and two points better than no points, and particularly when the, it counts like it does. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. So let's go across now to Luna Rosa, Prada Pirelli. Jimmy Spittle is waiting to have a wee chat. You tried hard, but just couldn't drag him down, Jimmy. No, we couldn't. They sailed very, very well today, and full credit to the NS team. They uh, look very, very sharp. Jimmy, starting software. So as soon as you tack on the starboard on that final approach, do you have a good idea that you're going to be late, or was that a big left shift? Or how, how did that work, that final approach coming into the starting line? Yeah, we're, we're on time, and uh, we actually had a little bit to kill, and we, we actually thought we may have a shot at hooking him, actually, when he tacked in front of us. Uh, but then on the way back, unfortunately, we got a big left shift after that happened. So uh, we went from sort of killing time to, to being racing to being late. And from then on end, there wasn't really too many opportunities. They sailed very, very well from then on, just playing the shifts and the course pretty nicely. Yeah, Jimmy, Nathan Adderich here. Um, it looked like once that start had happened, you were playing a very patient game, just waiting for them to make a mistake, and it didn't happen for a few laps. So at what point do you have to transition from being patient versus trying to force something? Yeah, that's the balance. I mean, early on in the race, we obviously didn't... We went into damage control just trying to keep it close um, and just, just wait for something to open up. Unfortunately, the, the way the course kind of set up, there wasn't really too many opportunities out on the left-hand side, so uh, they rightly so protected the right. And, uh, you know, we tried a couple of things up near the top, but, yeah, just, just couldn't find a way around them. But, yeah, again, full credit. They sold very, very well in front then. Jimmy, one last question. You, it looked like when you rounded the weather gate a couple times, you had a little bit of a spin out, a little loss of rudder control. Is that something that it has been an issue for you? And, and is, some, is it something that's fixable or is that just inherent of the boat and the package? Uh, no, it was really just a matter of hooking up uh, in the rig. We, uh, we came out and we just couldn't get the hook up in the rig to keep going and get going. The rudder, the rudder was hooked up the whole time. So, uh, yeah, no, no issue there. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of things we could have done better throughout the, throughout the race. We need to go back and really just try and learn from that and then come out swinging tomorrow against the Americans. Yeah, Jimmy, it looks like different forecast for tomorrow, maybe a click lighter. What, what are you guys 
going to focus on overnight to come out and get some race wins tomorrow? Oh, I think the big one, just really looking at the, the mistakes that were made um, and to the decisions, you know, all the input that went into them. Uh, if we could have done something a little bit better. Also, you know, just the, the race, once we were behind, did we play it as well as we could have? I think there was probably a couple other opportunities we could have tried. But again, you know, you, 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 I can't really fault them. I thought they sailed a, a very, very nice day and you just have to take your hats off to them. And, you know, the better team won the two races today. Thanks, Jimmy. Appreciate the time. Go take it out in the boxing bag tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Jimmy Spittle, one of the uh, twin helmsmen on Luna Rosa Prada Pirelli, who have been beaten by 28 seconds by Ineos Team UK, who have gone two from two, and that boat full of English supporters is undeniably ecstatic at that result. And why wouldn't they be? Because bluntly, no one, nobody would have picked it, but it has changed the whole narrative of this Prada Cup after day one. Except Shirley Robertson, apparently. <laughs> That's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's crunch the numbers. All right, upwind, upwind and downwind speeds, really even, like dead even for the most, dead even. I think, I think we might actually have a little bit of a, uh, a glitch in the, in the program right now. I think everything looks exceptionally even. <laughs> Should have been a tie. Should have been a tie on the race course, I believe, Nathan. There we go. This one looks like it's a bit more accurate. And once again, we're looking at maneuvers here. We're looking at bottom speeds and who's having the most efficient maneuvers. Straight line doesn't look that different, but when we dive in and we look at the bottom speeds and these tacks and jibes, it actually looks quite similar you yep. know, from the two teams. Just huge improvements from Ineos. When you see those bo the bottom numbers, all those little jagged edges down low in the bottom of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the graph, the two colors are very even in almost every single tack and every single jibe which is a phenomenal improvement for Ineos Team UK because this is where we saw big, big problems for their package in, in, that, in those last couple regattas. You just look at the numbers to the left, 25 knots as a bottom speed in tacking up wind, 30 knots as a bottom speed in the jibes. There's not many boats that can go that fast and these guys are doing that at their slowest point of sail. Quite efficient boats. So let's take a look at the key moment in race two of round robin one. Yeah, this is a simple one. This is the decision of Ben Ainsley to come to lead back this time. Remember, in the first race against American Magic, he crossed behind and he pushed back. Well, this is called the lead back, and that means that he thinks that they're going to be either on time or late for the starting line. And he was right. Jimmy Spithill thought he could hook him at one stage. He's actually moving down to the left of him for this hook maneuver. But the fact was that Ben Ainsley had it right. And Jimmy Spithill did not. Left hand shift, you can see the boats not even getting to the starting line on starboard tack. Left hand shift, late for the line. You know what, Nathan, this, this race was pretty much over from the start. It never, it, it, this was as close as the two boats ever got. And uh, off you go. If you're a British fan, well done, Ben Ainsley and company. I'll tell you what, if the boats are similar speeds, you definitely need to be winning these starts. And so far, that looks like it's been the key to both races. been perfect with a capital P for Ineos Team UK as the spectator fleet heads back in and some tunes are played and that boy must be feeling pretty cool and groovy right now but let's go onto the water as well with our chase boat number one and Shirley Robinson yes you picked it two from two Shirley but what do you make of what you've seen today and what will the other challengers be thinking about what happened out on the water today the other challengers have plenty to think about, don't they? I mean, it's, it's a real, this is only the beginning, Stephen. We're, we're one day into what is a, a month-long event, this Prada Cup, and 
I just think the progression every day, the learning from each team is going to be, you know, monumental. Uh, but Ben Ainsley's come out, he's laid it down, <laughs> he's sailed faultlessly. And that wasn't really about boat speed. He had plenty of boat speed, but not superior boat speed. And really, you know, really just laid down the mantle of, of perhaps what we can expect. What a great contest this is going to be. Surely this, though, will be an enormous shot in the arm. As Ben set up for the first race win, uh, a lot of credit must go to the Shore team and everybody to, for the work they've done on Britannia. But to go out there and then go and bag two wins and comfortable wins too, this, is, this, this cannot be underestimated. No, it, Matt, they had Christmas Day off and that was kind of it and not everybody... <laughs> Uh, you know, these teams here, they're, they're 100 people plus. So imagine you're, you're watching this unfold in the boat shed right now, knowing the amount of effort you've put in, you know, week after week. It's, it's a really big deal, and I'm sure there's a massive sigh of relief. They're not there yet. We heard Ben say that. They still have real concerns, you know, under this wind range, uh, which they'll need to keep on working on. But to come out today and be so dominant, very impressive. Yes, yeah, so I was just going to say for, for a moment, I thought uh, we were going to get quite an emotional Ben Ainsley there for me. You can almost see the, the relief come off his shoulders, but this is the key here. The team at the end of the four round robins with the most points goes straight to the Prada Cup final, but what a start by Enios Team UK. It's quite simply in front of you. Two races, two wins, two points. And that is where they stand right now. So. Tomorrow, it shapes like this, we'll complete round robin number one. And that will be with the first race, which will have Luno Rosa Prada Pirelli against American Magic. And then we will start round robin number two and race number one, and it will be Enios Team UK against American Magic. And all the talk now begins. Where did this performance come from? You talked about the foils, Nathan. I mean, and I, someone spoke to me well before the start and said, this America's Cup will be one under the water. Well, it's a one, one under the water and above the water, but under the water is critical because that's what gives you the lift to generate these boats to get them in the air, and that's where all the drag comes from. I think what's happened is, is that the foils that they were using in December were not operating the way they expected them to operate. They've surely said they've had cameras, they've been looking at them, they've got sensors on them, and they've engaged the foils, you know. Ben Ainsley talked about Mercedes helping them back in the factory. That's analysis. That's saying to them, OK, if you tweak the section shape here, it's not a huge change. It's just to get the flow and the lift and the drag all working well. And all of a sudden, the boat has control, it has speed, it has lift, and it's a different boat. The big question for me is tomorrow, it's lighter. The forecast, I was just checking it, it's going to be sub 10 knots. If that's true and it's below 10 knots and they can win another race, they are a real challenger. But if they can't, then they have a wind range they're competitive in and a wind range where they still have this big weakness. And we know as the months get later and later in Auckland, the winds get lighter and lighter. But if you've been easy right now, Ken Reid, you'd go, man, I'll take the points. Oh, uh, all you can, all I can imagine is how hard some of these team meetings have been at the end of the days. I mean, these are these are prime athletes at peak performance. They've been they've been doing this their whole life. They're on the boat because they're born winners. It must have been so hard to go through those last couple of weeks as just loss after loss and really tough loss after tough loss. This is going to be a really fun team meeting tonight. No matter what happens, this is going to be such a relief for so many people. But they deserve it because of what they have been through. They've been the brunt, you can imagine, of jokes around the place with all the money that's been poured into their campaign. And pre-Christmas, they could do anything about it. Suddenly, and you've got a feeling, didn't you, that Ben Ainsley was in control. Under pressure, looked a broken man, but has come out and gone, you know what? We had this under control. That is the story of the day in front of you right now. Enios Team UK and Britannia on their way home with their perfect start to the Prada Cup. Two from two, and there is more tomorrow. Wow. Let's say it again. Wow. It is game on. We'll see you tomorrow.
Today's America's Cup Racing is brought to you from Auckland, New Zealand.